Welcome, 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 everybody. This is the 86th episode of the Hashtag Investors Podcast. I am your host, Scott Bauer. And you know what? I'm excited today because we got Joe Terrio with us out of New Hampshire. A uh, guy I've been connected to for several years now, and we were just kind of catching up before the call here. He, I haven't seen him for like two years, more than that. And uh, he said that a lot has changed in his business. So I'm excited for him to be here today so that we can uh, talk about this and, and share what's changed and just kind of give, uh, you know, give you a lot of value today. So I'm glad that you're here. And before I start the call, I want to remind everybody that if you're getting value from the podcast, please like, share, and subscribe it, uh, subscribe to the podcast. We are, we're on a mission here at Investus to try to uh, elevate everybody's life and business uh, at lightning speed with the content that we provide here. So uh, please like, share, and subscribe and uh let's get going how you doing man i'm great i'm great happy to be here good happy to have you here a little bit about joe uh he's earned the trust uh, of executors administrators and attorneys alike by helping families settle estates in the most efficient and dignified manner over the years joe has developed unique expertise in probate trust and inheritance property sales he's an investor landlord licensed real estate agent in massachusetts as well as new hampshire uh, inherited Property Solutions, which is his company, started as a necessity for something that did not exist. Years ago, real estate investors and, and uh, real estate investor and landlord Joe Terrio was unsettled that people were uh, sadly thrust into a great deal of responsibility during a difficult time, such as losing a loved one and becoming responsible for inherited property. Furthermore, he realized that he was more complex than a typical real estate, or, or those are more complex than a typical real estate transaction. So since then, Joe, Ray, and their team have dedicated their time to help this distinct group of individuals sell their inherited property and dignity, or with dignity, and move on with their lives. So that's pretty cool, man. Uh, I'm excited to talk about that because it is kind of a, a niche that a lot of people don't understand. They really don't. I, I, I can't agree more. And if you like keep going down this road, you're going to trigger a whole lot of conversation about this, uh, you know, something I'm really passionate about. Well, um, you know, let's start the call. Why don't you give the listeners a little bit more about your background, uh, kind of, you know, more about what you're focused on now and we can dive in. Yep. You know, basically when just a, a, a short, you know, recap was, when I was 21, I bought my first multifamily, and that was 20 years ago before really investing in real estate was like the trend. You know, there was no HGTV back then. And, um, you know, I, I did the buy it, refinance it, take the money. But I was also 21, right? So <laughs> I was 21, right? So it, I had full intentions to buy more apartment buildings, and um, I didn't. That took me on a, a turn in life. And I um, ended up in Germany, I ended up in Texas, still like frothing at the mouth to do real estate. It was always there. And I was, grew up in a machine shop, so I was a machinist by trade. And um, when I was about 30, I left my um, ex-wife and child. Um, and I ended up back here in New Hampshire with literally no money and homeless in my car. Um, so that's basically to where I am now at 40, at, at, you know, to the 30 mark. And I worked in the machine shop up in New Hampshire where I um, came back and I bought my first apartment building again. I fixed it up, I refinanced it. I bought another one, fixed it up, refinanced it, bought another one, fixed it up, refinanced it, and opened the yoga studio um, and worked full time. And that brought me to about five years ago. Um, and I was at a jump off point where I met my now wife, Candy, who runs a marketing company. And she lived about an hour and a half away. And I had apartments I was running, working full time, and a yoga teacher, a yoga studio owner, right? So there was a point where I said, I have to let some of this go. And I let my job go five years ago and uh, career actually i've been a machinist for a very long time and uh, i went i went i went for it and um now i can say that we run a profitable successful real estate company um you know five years 
five years into it, just about this time, five years into it. Um, so I left my job. So it's, it's something I'm quite proud of. It's not perfect by any stretch, but um, if you would have asked me five years ago, did you think I was going to be here? I would have said, no, I thought I was going to like, the dream was to just like rehab a house. Like I thought, just get me a house to rehab. I thought that would be it. I never dreamed that, that I don't even know how many, honest to God, I don't even know how many rehabs we have right now. And um, what, what's in the, it's just crazy, you know? So it's a, it's a really good thing. I'm, I'm, most of the time pretty happy as any entrepreneur will know there's ups and downs and uh of of you know running a business for sure especially in the early years you know it's a great story to start it off because you know you had some success and then you traveled you found out internationally traveled sounds like did you get married internationally yep yep uh had a child whatever it was figured out that wasn't the right move so you started over again literally from ground zero, right? You were living in your car, didn't have any money, but you figured out how to, how to get through that. Um, you were resourceful and figured out how you could buy another property and rinse and repeat what you already knew how to do. Right. Um, did that a few times and put some cash in your pocket, started another business. That was a great way for the listeners out there to understand that even if you have nothing, you can still start and you can still get to where you want to go. Right. Hundred, hundred percent, and I, I think a lot of times um, the the dream is sold by gurus. I worked 60, 70 hours a week in a machine shop, doing whatever I could to get ahead, and I worked, and I learned, and I did it on the side. You know, there was a lot of work and sweat and tears that went into it. I didn't just said, okay, here I am. I'm a real estate guy, right? Um, even though I wasn't rehabbing houses, I still had been exposed to real estate over those 10 years. Yeah. So, you know, that leads us to today. Now, are you still buying and flipping multifamily? Uh, funny enough, um, we're not doing the, 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 you know, buy and rehab and refinance strategy right this moment. We do have it on our short-term goal to acquire 100 more units in the next two years. And the, as you'll kind of hear later as we talk, it's one of my little things for our questions at the end, but is really making sure that we have some processes in place to handle all of that uh, inflow, influx, whatever it's going to be there is, is kind of what we're trying to get in place here because we have we're passing up opportunities right now that are legit uh deals and make real good return on investments and we're basically passing them up so we can get more processes in place is it primarily multifamily that you that you own or that you work on or is it single family or is it a combination of both currently the what we have right now for inventory that we work on and rehab and and do that they are generally single families we have a duplex and a threeplex right now that um we're selling to retail home buyers you know that that can move in and owner occupy type thing so we're able to treat them as a rehab and 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 resell them quickly we're not holding any inventory right now um and it's just due to the scale that we've gone increased over the past year it has been a good amount of scale and taking on a bunch more multifamilies without some processes in place is I want to go do it. I am the shiny object guy of the team. I'm like, yeah, 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 let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Right. And, um, you know, some of the things that I've been learning from some guys that I'm surrounded with right now of slowing down, getting the right people on the bus and, um, getting these processes in place will, pay off because it won't matter what the real estate strategy is. It won't matter what business strategy I am in. If we have some processes and people on the bus, it, I, I could sell dodgeballs if I wanted to. Right. Yeah, you're right. You know, I, that that's such an important uh, piece. And I want to kind of stop there for a second because the shiny object syndrome you're speaking of is ever so prevalent in every entrepreneurial's lifestyle uh, or in every entrepreneurial's world, every entrepreneur's world, especially so in the real estate space, because you can fix and flip, you can buy and hold, you can be a wholesaler, you can go after apartments or you can go after single family or you can go after commercial and you can do a triple net lease and you can do, I mean, there's all of these different scenarios where you can make money. 
Right. So let's talk about focus for a minute. And I want to get on this for the listeners. What, what can you tell them about focus and what, how that's impacted your business? Yeah. So, so here's a, a quick synopsis that happened today. So just no, 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 no BS. This is what happened today. Uh, so uh, my wife, Candy, who runs marketing and has her own marketing company, we were in the conference room today and um, she asked me about, what was it? Um, uh, we're having a website issue on one of our websites. It's not mobile responsive. Okay. And she's asked, asked me to move it over to WordPress. And normally I'd be like, yep, go do it, you, you know, quick. And maybe that, because I want to move on to the next thing and deal with the next thing that's in my to-do list of a hundred items. Right. And I said, I actually have to think this through and make sure it's the right move. And she kind of looked at me like, did that just come out of your mouth? Like everyone here in the office knows that I'm the one that will make the snap decision. I'm the one that will go chase something. And what, it, what it's starting to do is changing the way everybody around me is acting because now they're focusing more because they're seeing me focus more, right? And it, granted, there, there are people on my team that already have high, high you know, my business partner and Candy both have high detail focus um, you know, things. So the focus part of it for me right now is allowing me to build the processes that are needed so that I can, um, basically I want to add more marketing strategies and marketing dollars to the company. Cause I know for every dollar I put in right now, we three to four exit. So I want to go, right. Uh, you know, I, I was homeless 10 years ago, right? I want to go, I want to go dump the money in and, and, and do it. Right. So, but it only comes to a point where if I don't get some processes in place here and focus to really get this stuff running, it my one of the coaches the other day said, um, it's like putting a supercharger on a Pinto, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what it's just so the listeners know i mean what does your team look like uh, maybe we should have started there because it's kind of hard to conceptualize what it might look like for you unless you know what what your team looks like to begin with so yeah how does that look yeah so right now i have uh, a business partner um, his name's ray and he comes from actually running a wholesale grocery distribution company that did about 50 million in revenue a year and had about 50 employees. So they sold that company. It was a family company and he's now my partner. Detail oriented drives me bonkers. Um, so, which is a good thing. And then uh, Candy, who's the marketing, does a lot of our marketing and owns her own marketing company that's here in, she has like one of our suites in the office, um, does a lot of our content, a lot of our marketing strategy, um, you know, legit marketing person yep. in the Marines was a journalist, like has that real writing, not I'm on Fiverr for $5 and writing cheap fake content for you. Um, and then we have inside sales guy, um, doing whatever it may be. It could be texting, it could be outbound, outbound cold calling, uh, taking inbound calls that are coming in. I have an overseas lead manager, which runs our CRM. She's great at actually running the CRM and being a lead manager and following up, calling people that need follow up, scheduling appointments for my outside sales guy um, that's going and putting offers in on properties. We also have an executive assistant that has about 20 years of retail real estate office management experience. And we have um, a a uh, broker that does all of our retail uh, stuff. Um, for so us. is that is that nine that I counted off off there? I think it's something like that, eight, okay. nine, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so you have inside sales, you have outside sales. Of yep. course, to keep these guys busy. Um, and then you have a leads manager, and you also have a CRM manager. Yep. Right? That's two different positions. So the reason I ask this is always interesting to understand people's different perspectives on what a team should look like, right? Um, what are you doing marketing wise in order to get the phone to ring and to get opportunities to be put in front of these people so that they can stay busy? Yeah. I mean, right now we've done a lot of the texting thing. We're doing some of the cold calling. We do direct mail. We do referrals. We do 
um, some of the bandit signs we do. Uh, where am I? If I just spin my void because I was writing some of this down. Um, you knew the questions were coming. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was just writing this out process. I was process mapping yesterday. Um, we are, that's, that's really it right now, actually. It's band signs, direct mail, text, cold call, and referrals. And, and that's it. And I'm, I'm profitable in every single one of those um, categories. Is it always, um, is it pretty equal as far as, you know, like um, the amount of money that you're spending in each space? No, and, no, no, no. You know, you uh, know yeah. More right. than the other. Yeah, funny enough, our actual marketing costs were pretty low lap this, this year since January 1st. Um, I'd, I'd have, we just had the numbers up yesterday. But um, basically, we're under uh, $2,500 cost per deal right now. On Just if we averaged it out, that's what our cost per deal is. Across all? All channels. Yeah, if we were to average it out, that's what basically we're running right now. Um, that's so, pretty good. I mean, it's pretty, yeah, it's a pretty. It's uh, av average. It's nothing, you know, it's not nothing to write home about, but it's it's not ridiculous. Well, yeah, but I mean, the fact that you know that and you're tracking that really does says a lot about the company. I mean, do you, um, not not to get too personal, how many deals are we talking about that you're going after a year? Is it 100 deals a year? Is it a volume? Is it a money standpoint? I mean, what's your target that you're going after? Yeah, right right now, this year, we had, um, frankly, we had a target of, um, I could, if I go pull it off the board, we had a target of 709000 in revenue. Um, with a profit of um, five hundred thousand dollars was our was what we thought we were gonna do <laughs> at the beginning of the year when we like really really went after this right and right now we're on we're on gonna go over that but we're about thirty seven percent profitable is okay. what it what it comes down to so every dollar that we put in basically comes back to like I said that three to four x of actual profit not no, no BS. So we're on track. I'm, I'm hoping to hit that million in rev, um, but I think we'll be a little under. We'll probably be at that eight to nine hundred, with just a thirty-seven percent mark, forty percent mark of, of of profit. Which I mean, which is good, right? Like that's you know pretty good profit margin. That's for sure. Not a lot of business out there are going to see that type of profit margin, um, in particular. But I mean, what's holding you back? Yeah. So I go, um, so right now it's, um, it's processes and people bottom line processes and people Amen to that man, Amen. you know, yeah. that's it. That's it. If we had some more processes in place, I would hire more people. I would do more marketing. It, it doesn't really matter. Like right now we're looking at doing radio, adding SEO and PPC. Like I'm actually, I'm not spending enough is the problem. <laughs> and I, you only because we don't have enough processes and people in place, right? Or I would go strap it on. Right? You know what, Joe, after we get off of this call today, I'm gonna connect you with somebody that I think could be really valuable for you uh, on, in the online space. Um, it's, a powerful, it's a powerful tool. So I'll just make that connection to help you with that. Great. Um, Appreciate it. What, what do you think, what, what can you give? I mean, you got, a lot of, you got a lot of moving parts out there. You got a lot of eggs in the basket. How are you quantifying this so that you know what's working and what's not working. And I'm asking the question for the listeners so that they can really inf input this in their life and their business. You know, how are you, how are you saying, you know, cause you can throw darts using all different types of techniques, right? But yeah. if you know that, if you don't know which technique is working better, then you don't know what you can, you know, how to, how to, how to expand that. So what are you using in order to track that stuff? Yeah. So we're definitely, definitely tracking everything right now. So we have a CRM and in that CRM, we're, we're tracking every, every call, that, every call that comes in, every, every, everything has its own phone number, its own, um, like I'm, I'm not always the best at giving like the proper terms, but they, every marketing channel, every phone number has its own label. So I'm able to track everything that people respond to um, when it comes into the CRM. So let's just say, for instance, uh, there's a text message lead and my person that's running text messages hits the button inside the software that we're running that it's a lead. 
it pushes into the CRM. The CRM then notices that it, because they're talking, whatever the, like, I don't know how I make that. My integrator slash candy does all that stuff. I just like do it, make this happen, make this talk. Right. So I can, we're able to pull the numbers and we're able to see, okay, how many leads did we get from text messaging? How many, how many are then how many uh, appointments did we get from it? How many closed deals did we get from it? So that's basically how we're able to track what's working and what's not working right now. And I've just been conservative on um, trying to do things that people aren't doing. That's how Inherited Property Solutions was born out of the gate was I didn't have a ton of money and I had to do stuff people weren't doing. And so I try and stay in that area of just like everybody's moving into texting right now. I'm like, dear God, get me out, right? Because everybody's there. Yeah. Um, I hate competition. So. Um, well, and you know, the, the fact, I mean, so Inherited Property Solutions, that's kind of where I was going next is let's dive into that a little bit more. It's a unique uh, sub segment of the general population of people out there that are wanting to sell their house in the sense that there's some more motivation in that type of um, lead, so, so to say, right? Yep. So what, what are you seeing that, uh, or what have you seen that made you decide that that's the route that you wanted to go? What happened earlier in the call when I was given the, the bio, you said it came out of necessity. So what happened that caused you to get into this niche? Mm. Early, it was, I was looking at different marketing channels, whatever it was, I was running out of money at, at the time, early, at that five years, you know, I only had, it's not like I had a big 401k or a bunch of money to live on when I left my job, right? So I had to make it happen. And um, what I ended up starting to do was go to the courthouse and pull probate records. And what I was seeing was nobody was there pulling probate records, right? So I knew that if no one was pulling them, skip tracing wasn't big five years ago you couldn't go google skip trace five years ago and have 10 providers come up it just wasn't there you could it just wasn't and um not that i not that i noticed anyway um and so the only way you could and i got a lexus nexus account um and i was legit skip tracing uh, executors or when you went to the courthouse the executor has to have their phone number for the court to get in touch with them so I would get their phone numbers right there and I was reaching out to them there. And it was, it was born out of like, I had to make business happen. Do you but still feel like not a lot of people are going after those targets? I think they're going after them. I just don't think they know what they're doing, frankly. Um, I think they approach it as every other type of lead and they don't necessarily approach it with the finesse that's needed to actually uh, take the time to close the deals. I think there's a, a of like the portion of investors out there, the amount of guys that I talk to that can actually talk the finesse are very, very, few. they're usually the upper tiers of investors that, that have the time and resources to wait a year on a deal and keep working it and keep working it and keep working it. And so Joe, would you say that the timeline that, you know, your, your sales cycle is much longer? Um, I guess I should maybe back up. So this is a distressed, a distressed homeowner. And even more than just being distressed, it's a niche within a distress, right? Because uh, it's specialty, it's, it's probate or it's an inheritance list or whatever, you know, and it's going to take time. So would you say that although the timeline, the sales cycle is longer, are you more profitable at the end? Or is it just that you got to stack a lot of these together so you have consistent revenue? over time yeah it's um it definitely is see we're able to list them so that's one revenue stream right i and then we we're able to legit buy them right i can obviously wholesale can obviously wholesale them it gets tricky there because of the way that i position the company and the branding that we have um and it comes off not in the put it this way i haven't ever wholesale a probate deal right? Or an inherited deal. Um, I just don't do it. I'm not saying it can't be done. It's just not the way I position us as a company when we get in front of this type of lead. And um, so it is a longer sales cycle. You do need more 
like I am spread wider geog geographically because of the amount of, um, you know, data it takes and the amount of qualified people to get one to shake out, we have to go wider and why I'm, I would like to break it into New England and eventually nationwide. And do you think, I mean, how quantify that a little bit? What, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, because I don't know what, how the listeners really don't know, right? Like, how wide are you talking about? And is it worth it for somebody to go in something like that? You know? Yep. I think it's, um, I think it's worth it to at least educate yourself and it's probably where, because the thing is, it's just not much out there for education, right? For, you go look at anything for probate stuff, right? And there's a typical probate course. You should at least go through that so that you know what an executor is and know how to talk to them, okay? These people need help, right? So I, I think that's like, yes, it's worth it. Yes, you should go educate yourself. To, and what I'm saying to kind of put it into a scope is I market to everybody in the state of New Hampshire that passes away with a piece of property attached to their name. Okay. We've also gone into about half of Massachusetts. Now I would like to take that and go into New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine. Uh, New Hampshire, yeah, Vermont, Maine, Rhode Island, Connecticut, right? So at least at least go there with it. Um, but uh, again, processes and people, <laughs> um, you know, dictate right now how far and how fast I can go with that. What? Okay. So what? And what are you using in order to get these processes and people down? Are you using another service like you know a lot of people know about EOS, um, you know, traction model, the traction model. Have you yeah. heard of that before? If you brought yes. those in, we I'm have traction in we have traction in place, and um, we also I don't want to say his name here. I'm happy to give it to you off offline because I don't know if he wants to be publicly known as a as a as a coach. Okay, um, we we hired him, and basically um, he is sharing some of his processes that he uses inside of his company. Right, so that's just. Uh, I'm looking for some lightning rods right now. Not, <laughs> I'm just taking his processes, laying them out, and 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 starting to infuse them into into what we're doing. Right. It's really, truly, what's happening right now. I don't have the time. It's not that I don't have the time. I don't have the patience to to go start a process from scratch. Scratch. I'd rather take somebody else's, do better with it, and and modify it so that I can go plug in more marketing dollars. You know, one thing I love about real estate, Joe, that's, I mean, it's always fascinated me since the very beginning I got into it is that in real estate, you do not need to reinvent the wheel to be successful. You can copy your way to success and it's fully legal, fully. I mean, it's fine. It doesn't matter. You know, change the words a little bit or figure out what somebody else has done to get to, to become successful, go follow exactly what they've done and you'll find the same uh, effect out of it. Right. It's a beautiful thing. It is. I, now, I agree. Um, what is one thing that if you could go back and do it all over again, let's re reverse five years ago. Mm. What would you do differently now that you think would have, that would get you further ahead than you're at now? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, my the to-do list is what i'm learning that i need a not to-do list right now <laughs> <laughs> um and I, man that's that's such a tough question like i did whatever i had to do those first couple of years i did i you know what i i think i limited myself early on like i again i I remember listening to some of the investor few stuff, like get a lead manager, do that. I was like, what? I'm not, this is just Joe. Like I'm going to, I'm going to rehab a house. You know, I think some of those limiting beliefs that I had of where this was going to go to actually make this something so that I could actually have a family, be able to kick box, whatever it is that I want to go do. Like I, I can't run a million miles an hour constantly and, for me anyway, be remotely sane, remotely healthy, 
be able to sleep. Like I just can't do that for me anyway. I can't. I, I, I'll do other bad things. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. No, I totally get it. And you're and you're absolutely right. So back to what you kind of said, people and processes. Earlier, maybe, and I here I'm talking. I'm speaking for yeah, you. Yeah, go for it. Right. I mean, I'm just guessing. You know, the majority because I think I suffered from that as well, and as a lot of entrepreneurs do. Um, you know, you just kind of get stuck doing everything yourself. But the fact is that now you're, you've recognized what's needed in your business in order to move forward, right? And to keep growing and keep getting better. And so you're taking the appropriate steps to get there, right? 100%. What, what would you say? So let's fast forward another five years. We know about the mm. last five. You know how you, how, you know, the struggles you've had to go through to get to where you're at today. Now you recognize how to make your business even better. What are we going to see out of Joe Terrio five years from now? Oof. Man, that see, that's what I'm now I'm hesitant to li limit myself, but we do have it out on the board of, for, you know, our, our traction organizer, right? Our three, five year, 10 year plan, right? Um, I, I honestly would like to have um, the, the niche of, I like the inherit the I, the inherited space, right? So if I could wave my magic wand and say I could do anything in real estate and where that brought me in the inherited space, I would I would love to be there, right? Because it could be, it it's just not the the um, executor or executrix that you're ended up helping. You have surviving spouses that need to downsize out of their homes. There's a shortage of senior affordable senior housing in New Hampshire, right? There's a lot of that shiny object inside of that space that I would love to be able to dive deeper into that um, I'm just I'm just not right now so I would love like if I had something that I would love to be in that I'm most passionate about in real estate it would be down that road but it would be limiting if I put something on in the next five years because I can <laughs> you know so in the next week we, we want to have some more rental units we want to have I want to say in the next two years anyway 100 more rental units and we have some revenue goals um, which I can't see right now they're up on my wall um, of where we would like to be at as a real estate company um, and I would just I would like to have a real estate company that was a little more hands-off for me um, and I was able to really focus in some of the areas that I like focusing in real estate right now I've had to still bring in some other marketing channels to make sure that we have the revenue coming in. The opportunity is being put yeah. in front of you, right? Yep. What would you say from a percentage standpoint, and I'm sure every market is, is a bit different, um, but is there a, a percentage you can put on for the amount of homes that are in that inherited category or in that niche distressed category that you, know, that you service? Uh, if you're talking about, you know, a whole population of people like, you know, here in, in the Phoenix market, I, I want to say that one to 3% of the, the, the population of people that are willing to sell are willing to sell to an investor like myself or, an, you know, another, another investor. Um, can you say the same thing about, you know, your, your niche side mm -hmm. of it? Yeah, I, I used to have those stats and they're just rusty. Um, on what, how many, how many deaths per month were, I don't look at it from a probate standpoint. I look at it from an inherited standpoint. So I look at it from the standpoint of someone's passed away, what a piece of real estate attached to their name. And because it can flow out into many different channels of inherited besides just probate. So I used to have those numbers for New Hampshire. It's not that many. That's inevitably the, you know, we have a niche with how many, I have a million population in New Hampshire, right? So even if you take the 3% of those people that are willing to sell, right? And then you take that, that they're in the um, inherited arena, it's a really small percentage. And that's why going a little bit wider with it is what's needed in servicing everybody inside that box. Um, is is the only way that I found to really monetize it. If you really wanted to stay just down that road and become an expert in that space. 
So with that special space, how have you been able to utilize technology in order to find those types of opportunities? You know, how has technology influenced your business and how do you continue to keep use it moving forward? <laughs> Ready for the big one? That's Here it. it is. Super technology. We direct mail them. <laughs> we direct mail them with a super piece of branded content. Not your typical, we're looking to buy your house. Branded marketing letter that shows them that we care the colors i have on right now everything's done for a reason the light blue establishes trust you go to my website you go to look us up like I, inherited property solutions is completely separate from my other marketing channels you just i have to keep them separate um so that's um you know kind of direct mail is our biggest performing for IPS and I also have referrals with attorneys I go to bar association events you know I do stuff there um, you know we do some of the typical skip tracing and cold calling on stuff but really it's I'm starting to be at a point in the business where I can shift to things that are less management intensive and more process uh, oriented and I can right. pull a list mail the list and get x amount of leads and x amount of deals and that's just the way it goes right so do you do you think that the reason why that works is because uh so i'm i'm heavy in direct mail i think everybody knows that who's been on the podcast been a loyal listener here um and, and you as well probably know that from before but do you think that that works for these people because they're even even the heirs that are getting your letter are, are up there in age or are a little bit more elderly or not quite as tech savvy as, you know, the, the millennial generation or people of the such that way, you feel like it works. 110%. Even most of the heirs, um, you, you figure we have, man, I used to be so much better about this stuff, but you have the, um, you have the senior generation, which is in that like 80 to 90 year old bracket. And right now the baby boomer generation is between, I think the, the cutoff of boomers are like 52 years old to 70 years old right now. So, you know, those boomers are ones who are inheriting stuff right now. And they're the ones that still open direct mail. Seniors still open direct mail. Yep. The, the, my age bracket of the 40 year olds, I don't even know what that's Gen, I don't even know. I'm not good at that, but um, Gen X maybe. Yeah, Gen X, right? we still open direct mail, right? So those generations that are mostly inheriting, I haven't ever in, um, done a deal with a 40 year old with an inherited piece of property, the 50 and older. Um, so generally speaking, I know that they open direct mail. So I wanna ask this kind of a, a little bit different question. You may or may not know the answer. Does education level uh, matter have you have you noticed or been able to track the education level that somebody has that you've done deals with on uh, you know the the specialty list <laughs> um, yeah I would say so um, I would say it's also median home price and under um, is, is one of them I've never bought uh, inherited home or listed maybe listed a couple inherited homes that were above median home value. Generally speaking, though, we haven't bought one that's above median home value in this area, which is, let's just call it New Hampshire, 300,000, Massachusetts, 450,000 north of Boston. Um, it, lightly speaking, right? People can contest me on north of Boston, but New Hampshire, let's just say 275, 300. Okay. Um, and we generally don't pay that type of price for a home here if we're buying it outright. Right, yeah. I mean, if it's a $300,000 house, you're probably paying what, 175 to 210, something in there for something like that? Is that about right? Yeah, I like it nice and deep. So we're under usually, especially if it's an inherited deal. I'm the first one at the door. I'm branded, I'm buying deep. I like it, so, I like it. Yeah. We don't need to go into that necessarily, but yeah. um, I, I totally get where you're at. You know. This is something that I think uh, for the listeners out there that are listening to this is something to look at in your own specific market. We got people, listeners from all over the country, all over the world that are listening to this podcast. So, um, you know, if you're out there and you're thinking about how can I separate myself, unless you're in New Hampshire, then you can't do it. But yeah, don't um, call me. <laughs> 
But, um, you know, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, trying to separate yourself, this might be a, a unique uh, place uh, for you to look. Do you, are there resources out there for people to understand more about, you know, the, this specific niche on how they can figure that out in their own market? No, frankly, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. give me a call. Uh, no, right. Um, it, it, it really, oh, man, it's, it's come down to just experience for me. Like yeah. I reached out to a guy in San Diego years ago and he knew some stuff um, about them that was at a deeper level and um, lending to estates that ha that are uh, cash poor and all they have is real estate in the, um, you know, all they have is real property in the estate, right? So that means they're really handicapped on anything. They can't even get a probate attorney to probate the house because there's no liquidity, right? So most attorneys don't wanna to touch that because how are they gonna get paid? Right? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so, and you, at most people, at most investors that are at a, a certain point in their career won't even know that piece of information, right? <laughs> you know, um, they won't even know that, right? So if you're in the beginning parts of your career, there just isn't much out there except for the typical repurposed, regurgitated probate certification right i'll sell you one 99 bucks right yeah i'll give you a, i'll give you a stamp and i'll send you through a a, 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 a a something that says you're probate certified but i'll tell you there's a big difference between that and how i talk to somebody on the phone and they come in and legitimately need help and it, that's what it is i mean it's very yeah because i know i've done i'm shoot i'm in uh I'm in three probate deals right now. Right. Uh, you know, that, that I've been in probate for quite, quite a while. The language you need to understand to ask, to understand if they have the proper documentation to even be in a spot to sell it. What happens if, if uh, you know, there's, there's liens from before that were never cleared. Like I just had to go through a quiet title, which is a 90 day process just to get clear title. Uh, you know, it could be uh, being named as the, uh, the, uh, successor trustee of that estate, right? Yep. You need to make sure you have a uh, original death certificate. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff you need to know, right? Right. And that's only really, I, 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 do, I do believe you when you say that, you know, it just goes through experience. So um, anyways, those of you out there that are possibly thinking about doing it, you know, maybe just get started, try to go through, just go through the motions. You'll eventually figure it out, it sounds like. An attorney, an attorney that, that, um, you can build a relationship with goes a long way, which is tough if you're a newbie, but even if you're somewhat seasoned, having that relationship in your pocket, I can't tell you how many times this, this year alone has made me money having that attorney in my pocket. Yeah. Um, where if I'm, you know, got a question or whatever it is, or he's just, that's probably one of the biggest pieces that you can have. And any, anybody in the estate arena could be, a a fiduciary that isn't helps people. It could be uh, an estate sales company. It could be a, an appraiser because the uh, appraisal needs to be done for the attorney. You know, there's so many different little pieces in there that knowing all of those pieces so you can connect them for someone that's in this situation or just, you know, brings uh, more credibility and more authority in the space and you as a problem solver to buy properties at a discount. The more you have in your in your wheelhouse or stable, just allows you to buy even deeper because it's less less you know. I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, right? So yeah, right. You know, you know what I mean. So it's like th those things are why I'm able to buy so deep on on them because I they just trust me, you know. Yep. Yep. Totally. And you know, I think in a good attorney in any real estate investor's world, you need to have a good attorney uh, that you can rely on and call on and all the above because there's just sticky situations that you're going to be in. Um, you, Joe, it's been good, man. I, I think that you provided a lot of value for the, for the listeners out here about how to get into it and manage, I guess, the, this niche side of investment real estate. I think, um, I think you're onto something and, you know, especially as the baby boomer generation continues to get older and eventually move on and pass on, right. This, this niche you're talking about, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I think we're, 
really just at the beginning of this, uh, to be honest with you, right? Um, we see that there's a lot of people that are going into uh, retirement homes over these next 10, 15 years that are going to be passing on uh, over that same amount of time. So your net, you know, your your opportunities are probably just going to continue to get greater and greater. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I've seen it with the We Buy Ugly Houses guys. And now it says We Buy Ugly Houses and Inherited. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I want to spray paint them, you know? Uh, yeah. So I, you know, it's, it's bigger guys are catching on. Yep, absolutely. And it's been cool to just see kind of where you've been since last time I, I saw you a couple of years ago and how your business has evolved and, and ultimately to hear your, the process of how you started. You originally started, you had some success, you got married, moved across the country, you went back, uh, came back, started over again from ground zero. Now you've built it up again. I mean, and now you're seeing the success that you're seeing. It's pretty impressive stuff. Um, uh, so congratulations to you, man. For sure. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. Now, I know that uh, our lightning round is going to take a minute. So let's uh, let's get started with it. Are you ready? I am. All right, man. Let's do it. Um, tell me, first question, tell me about a time uh, where you had to pass on a deal. Was that a good idea or was that a bad idea and why? Yeah, I don't have a specific because we are passing on a lot of stuff right now. And right now, we're passing on Maltese. It, I hate it. I actually hate it that we're passing on it. But I know that if I can just bear with and get my process straight, we'll be able to do even bigger stuff yeah. you know, and not get bogged down by small deals. Yep. Yep. Well, and that, and that makes sense. I mean, uh, you're just making sure that you're making the best of your, of your time, right? And you're, making, you're taking the best opportunities that come in front of you. So uh, if, that's, if that means pass on to multis, then it is what it is, right? Yep. yep. Um, do you have a book that you what's the last book that you read and what yeah. was the impact you had on that man i'm telling you this book I, good to great right now is um something that i'm really entrenched in and that's that's the one that i'm entrenched in right now jim collins is a is a is a magnificent person um i think that book how have, are you still reading it right now yeah yep yep so a lot of takeaways. What I what I noticed when I read that book was that um, I had to read it slow because it's not really that in, like it's it's not a dry exciting book necessarily. But there's a lot of pointers out of it and a lot of things that you can take home. Um, and the other thing I did is after I actually read it, I listened to it on Audible because yep. I yeah I mean it it just makes a lot of sense. So anyways, appreciate you sharing that. That's a big book. All the listeners out there, I we both recommend you should read that. Yep. Um, what are you currently trying to learn right now? <laughs> Making better processes. <laughs> That's really it. It's just getting these. I'm so in into the process thing right now. And that's it. I got, I got my executive assistant printing out like actual blueprints. When I used to run a machine shop, I would have whole map, you know, we'd have blueprints, never mind a little computer. We'd have big, huge blueprints laid out. And, um, you know, I have 10 foot whiteboards in my office. You know what I mean? Like that's what, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. You know, I, um, and it's that visual part of it is really, really important. Right. So, um, you're not going to go wrong there. I probably need to do a better job of that myself, to be honest with you. So hats off. Um, do you have a superpower and how do yeah. you use that superpower on the day to day? And you kind of like, um, stumped me when I read that question and I, cause it's kind of uh, multifaceted, but right now, I've always thought that I was able to consume lots of data and pass on the garbage and not get stuck down a rabbit hole to a certain degree and just consume, 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 which I'm sitting here saying, yeah, I need to focus more. If I was to say, if anything, it was just a tough, I don't know, it's a, I hear you like, you know, what's the superpower, right? You know, like I, that was something that I'm able to go research something, grab onto it and and get step one implemented, right? And that's what I'm really good at doing. Good, good. Um, well, so you would just say that your superpower is taking one thing at a time and implementing it one thing at a time? Yeah, and get, I'm really good. Give me something, I'll get it to step one, and then I need three other people to get it to step two, three, and four, right? <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people, they'll overanalyze. Right. So I'm really good at not overanalyzing and, and making sure it makes sense. 
yep. going and testing it. And if it don't work, I don't care next. Right. Yep. I, that's kind of what I've grew machine shops and processes. Cause I just kept testing, kept testing. And I had top engineers telling me that it would never work. It would never happen. Right. And I would just keep doing it, keep testing, moving, tweaking, testing something else, breaking it, running it till it broke. Right. And just kept down that road. So that's that's where where I'm good versus the overanalyze and analysis by paralysis, right? Right. Yep. Amen, man. Um, how do you like to give back, Joe? Yeah. Right now, really, if um, what I've done a few times this year is I like helping people or anybody in the inherited arena that really truly needs the help. Um, and there's not any money for me to be made. Um, I've helped a few of those people this year and either, um, it, you know, the, uh, for example, was the um, gentleman came to me, his son had died. They didn't have, there was no, they had a mobile home that was in a park and, you know, the park is still charging the estate rent. There's not a lot of like room and money to be made on this mobile home and being able to just help the executor. Um, you know, then the court said the home mobile home was worth like the, the tax card said it was worth 20 grand and really the thing was worth like three grand. So now the court's fighting them on that. So like actually being able to, uh, you know, type up uh, something for the court, being able to put together some numbers for them and explain to them that that's actually untrue. Um, this is what the house is actually valued at and actually be able to just settle that estate quick, not cost them any money. You know, I, I enjoy doing that type of stuff and yep. being able to provide my expertise in that arena and just be able to help where I can within reason. You know, I don't want everybody in their brother calling me saying, Joe's going to help me, <laughs> you know, for free. Uh, but I, I, when I can, I do like to give in that space. Sometimes you have to do that, right? Sometimes that's a, that's a selfless act that, you know, you might be able to change somebody's life for the better that otherwise, you know, never would have had that opportunity. So hats off to you. Uh, well, if people want to learn more about you, if they want to learn more about, you know, this niche space in their own market, obviously not your market, but uh, if they want to know how to do this, how can they reach you? Where can they find you? Yep. Basically the Joe at inherited property solutions.com okay. is probably your best bet to get in touch with me. Um, you know, we're on Facebook, the website's up, there's different things there. It's all going to, if you do anything, any, any of those things, they're just going to route into my CRM and one of my sales guys is going to call you. Um, so if you really want to get in touch with me, best bets, um, you know, uh, the inherit, the inherited email, you could probably shoot me a text 603-558-8604. Um, and just give me a, a text with a question if it's something like that that I can, you know, quickly well, answer. Quickly answer. Uh, if you call me, I won't recognize the number. I'm getting better about time blocking, so I probably won't answer. Um, but I'm I'm I like helping investors as well, um, and I do give back there as much as I can because other guys have given to me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to make sure to include that in the show notes for all the loyal listeners uh, that have listened to this podcast today. And once again, man, I appreciate you being here. It's good to catch up with you, you know, hear about the niche that you're, uh, that you're dominating right now up in the Northeast part of the country. And, um, and it's exciting. I think, you know, like I just said, I think that your business is going to continue to get better and um, you know, more opportunities are going to present themselves. For sure, Scott, it's been a privilege to, speak on the show absolutely absolutely appreciate you very much and we'll uh we'll stay in touch that's for sure sounds good all right joe talk to you man bye-bye